Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9 GP, and it's time to start another season in my Draft Day Sports uh, College Basketball 2021 playthrough uh, with the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. That's a mouthful. Uh, we're, I, I think this is season six. I'm going to have to double check now that I think about it. Um, yep, this is season six. After two Final Four uh, tournament, NCAA tournament appearances, made it to the second round last year. It's a new season. I'm hoping that we can repeat. I would love to get back to that tournament three years in a row. Um, like to get our prestige going. We're kind of at a almost like a holding pattern in a way because even though we had that great season last year, I don't think our prestige improved by much more than a couple points, if that. So I'd like to get that um, going a little bit higher. Maybe that we can do that if we have another good run make that tournament again. Uh, I was able, though, to get a, a higher budget. One of the things you can do at the end of the year is you can petition the board, and that's the thing I asked for this year because I got an assistant coach who's, I felt, doing a good job and, and is rated pretty highly for development, and he's the one who's been uh, doing our practices. You can see here player development up to three stars. Um, so I wanted to keep up keep him on the staff, but he, it took a lot of money, more money than I was hoping to spend. So I'm, I'm thinking that budget may have helped, but this episode, we're ready to go. And, um, I'm just going to go over a few things that happened since the last episode, pretty much the off season leading up to where we are right now. And then we'll get through and sim the non-conference schedule, hopefully get through most of it, if not all of it. So I'm going to start with the recruiting, um, I know a few episodes ago I, I kind of looked at recruiting. I didn't do that this year or for this season because we had four scholarships open, and, man, it's a lot of work back and forth, you know, a lot of a lot of screen clicking. But I think I may have done a decent job this year, um, and, and i tell you why I feel that way. So we had four scholarships available, and where we th have holes – on this team, right away, you, you could probably say point guard, but it looks like each position outside of center, uh, we needed somebody in there. And so I'm not as happy with the point guard now because he's gone down. His position ranking at one point was a lot higher. You can see he's already – he was top 10 regionally uh, as a point guard. Now he's 17th. But I do like his – uh, ball handling, I like his passing, and he's an outside shooter, high scorer. So he may be able to fill in at shooting guard if we need him there, uh, if he doesn't you know, pan out as a point guard. But I liked him. But outside of him, the other, the other recruits here I'm really happy with. Dan Watson as a small forward, even though he's gone down as well. He's got good ratings here. There's not really a weakness, uh, I don't think, for this guy. He's got good size really for a small forward, but I think he was one, yeah, he was in the top 25 at the Memphis Hoop Summit. And then went with Mark Cotton, power forward. He's lost some ratings too, but he was a top 10 player at the Memphis Hoop Summit. Has some good uh, defense ratings and rebounding. He's another one of those who I don't see really a big weakness in his skill ratings. And then finally, we got Clarence London, who we're going with. This guy is listed as the fifth best shooting guard available um, in the region. And his other rate rankings have gone down a little bit, but he's putting up 17 points a game um, in high school. I know his ratings don't really show it. I'm just hoping that these um, rankings where he st you know, stands up, I guess, against the competition, I'm hoping that that plays a part. He was really one of the best um, shooting guards available regionally. So I think this is a pretty balanced um, recruiting class from where we're at. I'll, I'll take it. We had a rough run recruiting last year with just one, um, one spot available. So I'm, I'm thinking that's a much better outlook if we keep these four guys. Um, and right now we got three of them with the verbal. Another thing to, to look at too is – on the roster, uh, 
we did have one spot open for transfers, and I got a center to give us some depth there. But depends on how Dunkley does this year. This is going to be Dunkley's first year starting. This guy might be the starter when he's available to play next year. He comes out of um, Western Kentucky, so he's he's familiar with the conference. He's um, looks like he's got some good rebounding ability. If you look at his his uh, bio here. I like these sevens bunched up here in rebounding and defensive ability and shot blocking. He's a good passing center, so I think he would uh, handle that Princeton offense pretty well. So I like that pickup, but I'm just going to have to wait a, a year for him to start playing. And I tell you, once again, I, I know we're going to lose some guys this year finally um, off this off this team. Three starters, actually, uh, and Steven Johnson at point guard, Hanson at shooting guard, and then Baxter at small forward. But I still think we have some good depth, um, and I'm hoping really good enough depth to compete in this conference for a few more seasons anyway. But I think I'm, I'm starting to think this is our last big chance to make something happen in the tournament, so we really need, we really need it to happen this year. Uh, but that's... That's what I wanted to cover there in recruiting. Now, looking at the schedule, once again, we're going with the balanced schedule. We did that last year. And I can't tell yet whether whether this schedule is going to be worse or better than last year's. We got some good matchups. We got two ranked opponents, at least they're ranked right now, preseason, um, going into the schedule. And they're higher, you know, than the two ranked uh, opponents I think we met last season in non-conference. But outside of them, I mean, the Wake Forest is probably going to be a tough game on the road. Belmont might be tough even though they're home. George Mason at home could be tough. Mississippi on the road could be tough. I'm thinking it might be potentially the same as last year, but in terms of just – difficulty, but I'm still not feeling good about how we're going to finish. I mean, we were 8-3 and three going into our conference schedule last year. Um, I think we're going to have a hard time repeating that, but, you know, this is the strongest team I put out there. Short, well, it's up at center. Um, I think that's really going to be the, the telling factor here is how well Dunkley plays at center, but it it's still, you know, it's still a good team. I think two years in a row we've got a lot of guys returning and uh, getting better. And I'm, I'm hopeful overall that we can make another good run from it for the the uh, NCAA tournament. But it could be this year we might have to win that conference tournament to get there. But uh, that's where we're at. I'm going to go ahead and start simming the games. We're ready to go with the Oregon right away. Um, I don't know how good they've been, really. It, I can't remember. It seems like, you know, I do so many of these that I can't remember how some of the other teams are doing year to year. It seems like Oregon may have had, though, a good run recently. So I might be uh, in for a really tough one. This could be an embarrassing loss, or it could be close. We never know. It was an embarrassing loss. So that's how it turned out, 81-53. to 53. We weren't really competitive. Muhammad, uh, backup point guard, got more points than anybody, it looks like. And that's one of the things, too, that um, I'm hoping it's not a carryover from last season, if you guys got to see that um, season play out in, in, in the few episodes. Johnson, when he first came to this team, you can see his outside shooting there is, is perfect, ratings-wise. He was a good scorer. Right away as a freshman, he was just under 13 points. And then last year, uh, and then 13 points again in 2022, then last year he just... He had a lot of games where he was over. You know, he just he couldn't score anything. And um, I, I'm worried about this guy because he's the best-rated player on the team and has been, I, I'd say, for the last three seasons. But he's struggling. Even this one, he had five turnovers, just ten points. Uh, so it's – unfortunately, he hasn't been the kind of player I thought he was going to be. And, and, man, what is going on with – did Baxter get injured – you know, I'm finding that <clears throat> the depth charts, there's something off in the depth charts on this team, and I, I can't figure it out because it's something that I think a uh, one of my viewers 
mentioned <clears throat> that you know some of these guys are are not getting minutes and they're not even though they're they're um set to get the minutes so i'm not sure what's going on let's go back to this game and let me show you what i'm talking about so first off i'm only subbing at as far as i can tell let me let me just start it this way so baxter i noticed didn't get a lot of points in that game you know or a lot of minutes only 15 minutes as the starter and yeah he's set to sub at or below 75 which is where i've always been <clears throat> but he, he i couldn't see that he got injured but if i go back to that game um no fouls so i'm not i'm not sure what's going on dunkley you, maybe he got into foul trouble i guess you could say but why are these guys not getting minutes? Hanson just 11 minutes. So I'm hoping I'm hoping something ain't corrupt here, but uh, this is already alarming me because you know Muhammad got 24 minutes. I'm guessing he got that that point guard and, and shooting guard. So I cannot figure that out. I feel like you know I'm worried that something might be corrupt in the save that's causing that. Um, but uh, we're, we're just going to have to keep an eye on it because um, I started noticing it last year, especially towards, I think he even mentioned it in some of the episodes, maybe been, it could have even been as far, far as two seasons ago, that even with the depth chart set, there were some guys who were getting like uh, 20 plus minutes in some games when they were only, you know, like eight minutes in the depth chart. So, um, I know that was just one game, but I'm going to have to keep an eye on that because that could be troubling because you can't really set your strategies if, if you don't know how much time your starters are going to get. And it could have been a situation where maybe, you know, the AI has something in there where, you know, when you're getting routed like that, that you put in the backups. So we'll just have to see. That's what I'm hoping. But we got another game coming up next. It's going to be next week because that tip-off was really early in the season. <clears throat> so we got the uh, Wake Forest game coming up here pretty soon. Texas Southern next, but they're home. I'm hoping I'm hoping that's going to be a good win for us. But we got to get those minutes up, though. I can't. <clears throat> I can't see us winning if if uh, if our starters are not going to be playing. So we got a lot of uh, things here. We got some letters of intent from pretty much the guys who've already given us the verbal. Still waiting for London to hopefully give us a verbal. I'm disappointed that he his ratings went down. He's a JUCO player though, so I think he's the one who's JUCO. Yeah, he's JUCO. <clears throat> as is Watson. No, he's a high schooler. Okay, so just that was one of those things I didn't want to do. Um, but I think I just got to the point where I couldn't get any point guards. There, were, there weren't a whole lot in this region uh, who were interested in MTSU. And uh, I think at the end, I basically had to go with the best available, which turned out to be a few JUCO players, honestly, that I went went after. All right, so now we got the Texas Southern game coming up here. They're two and zero, so they may not be an easy um, an easy win here. They're one and zero on the road. All right, let's get it going. So pretty decent win, eighty four sixty three. Johnson, 21 points. I'm hoping that, uh, you know, maybe I got a little bit carried away there. Maybe it was just that we were being beat so bad. Yeah, now this now it's getting to work. That's the way I want the starter situation to look because I've got some guys here. I want, like, Walker, who's a sophomore, three-and-a-half star um, power forward. I want him to get some time because I, I'm expecting him to be the starter next year when um, – well, no, Wilcox has still got another year, so hey, maybe not. <clears throat> Wilcox um, got a 
bunch of rebounds here. But looking at the team, uh, looks like we just shot well. We held them to under 40%. We out-rebounded them pretty high, 39 to 27. Turnovers about even. Uh, five turnovers again from Johnson, but 21 points. I may have to live with it. Off the bench, um, well, also Dunkley, 15 points. I should mention that because he's a guy I need to keep an eye on because, you know, as a sophomore, he's still got that four-star potential. I'm hoping he meets it. Uh, but off the bench, Muhammad um, getting not as many minutes as the last game, but he looked pretty good. He's a good outside shooting point guard as well, if I look at his bio. Uh, so a good win, but we got a real tough ch challenge coming up here in Wake Forest. You know, that's they're 0-2, though, I noticed. But they're, they're the kind of team that we need to win. They, they, that helped us out a lot last year because we beat Purdue on the road, even though Purdue at the time wasn't that uh, having that great of a early start to their season. Their season, you know, they just kept playing better. And by the end of the, the uh, season, that game became like uh, when I when I won it at first, it was like a quadrant two or quad, maybe even quadrant three. But by the end of the season, it was a quadrant win win. And that helps you when it comes to making the uh, tournaments. And look at this, Wake Forest 0-3. That's a shocker. I still think they're probably going to be favored to beat us, though, but we'll see what happens. No, nope, we, we won 63-51. They're 0-4. So they're having a down year, apparently. And look at Johnson, man, three points. He's just all over the place. I don't, um, I don't get what's going on with him. Minutes, though, they're fine, so I guess I'm, I'm going to have to chalk that first one up to just the AI coach giving players time. Um, all of our starters except Wilcox look good, but Walker off the bench, you know, he was plus 13 when he was out there. He didn't really contribute much to the final score, but uh, that's good to see from him. Drexler, he's another one who, who I think has some upside who might be – Small forward, uh, starting with Baxter goes. So I want to give him some time. Uh, Hanson, leading scorer. And once again, Dunkley, 11 points, double digits. Can't can't uh, be too unhappy with that. Now, Woodley is the guy. That's why I really went with that transfer center in. Uh, Woodley was just a bust as a recruit. Um, I don't know if he's going to meet that four-star potential. Right now, I can't see anything from him that looks good, except he's a good inside shooter. He's good at drawing fouls. Um, he, he, every rating that he had went down after I uh, signed him, or after he signed with us. But I'm looking at turnovers here. They're even again, but uh, we didn't shoot well in this game either. Uh, I'll take the win. I'm going to take a look when we get to the end of this week. I'll take a look at what the net looks like on that to see if it's... Um, a better quadrant win than I'm thinking. I'm, I'm thinking, though, it's probably going to be quadrant three uh, with the record that Wake Forest has now. <clears throat> I know another thing I'd mentioned, you know, a long-term goal would be to get this team in, in the rankings, and, and one of my uh, longtime viewers commented about that. It's, it's, it is really tough to get a conference USA team in – the, that top 25. I don't know if I'm going to be able to accomplish that. If I'm looking at where we are right now, I think if we had somehow beaten Oregon, we might be looking at it. But all right, so here's a tough one. I, I'm hesitant because this guy might decide. No, oh, he did decide to go with us, so that's good. So we got all of our recruits. Um, looking at the rankings, you know, I guess London is probably going to be the best. Um, and again, like I said earlier, I, I'm just basing this on, you know, more his rankings against uh, the other shooting guards out there than anything else. But I'm hoping I'm hoping that I didn't let somebody here go away. Will Gandy is a, you know, he would have been a better point guard than who I got, but at the end of the day, I just couldn't get him interested. So that's um, that's the unfortunate thing. And then DJ Seals was also a guy who's. Looking good as a small forward. He's from Murfreesboro. I think he would have been an easy sign. But when I recruited between um, 
between him and Watson, Watson was just rated higher. And right now, that's flipped. Seals is higher. But let's look at the standings in the net. So we are 2-1. and one. Net is 56. But how about Southern Miss? Who have they beaten? Their net is 4. They beat Purdue, Western Carolina. I, I don't understand that. They're, I wonder if they're even ranked. That would be crazy because I just said how tough it would be to get a team ranked from here. Um, not seeing them. Purdue is up there, though, and they beat Purdue. But their net is fourth. Are they in the coaches' poll? No. That is really interesting to me. I mean, how, how does that happen? If they keep winning, you know, they may have a chance. But I'm going to take a look at our net just for, for the heck of it. And uh, sorry, I'm looking at, forgot I was at Southern Miss. But, well, you know, just let me, let me take a look at that because that would tell me what wins are ranking. Tulsa was a quadrant one. Purdue, oh, it was Purdue-Fort Wayne. I don't see much about this schedule that, uh, wow, that's really crazy. And Tulsa was a home win. Uh, are Tulsa is Tulsa ranked? I'm really perplexed here. Tulsa, I don't see them ranked either. All right, sorry, I got I get distracted pretty easily. When you get a game like this that has so much information, it's kind of easy to, to get lost. And I don't even really showcase a whole lot of. Uh, um, yeah, Wake Forest was a fourth quad quarter four win. Anyway, I don't. I don't really even showcase some of the stats and things that you can do in this game. Uh, I know that I recommend you take a look under that insights. There's some great stuff. I know that I've shown before. Of course, I've shown the net more in the last few seasons or, yeah, to whenever we started with the 2021. But I love the lineup tracking, you know, to see how those top, you know, your five starters – you know, how they're faring, you know, if there's anybody like any uh, matchups or mac, you know, mixing and matching of your lineups that may help you. It's looking like, just giving it a quick glance right now, our bench is really struggling. Uh, a lot of negatives there, but that's, uh, I'm pretty sure that's just from that Oregon game because that was a, that was a really tough loss. So let's go, going up against St. Fra Francis next, and they're a, uh, they're an 0 4 team, which means very little. <laughs> um, well, it used to mean very little. I mean, I think we've we've gotten a little, so much better in, in terms of depth. I mean, we, we're favorites, I know, against some of these teams, but um, and this was an easy win, 78 50. But you know, it's basketball especially college basketball it can be a crazy sport you know game to game you don't know what you're what you're up against but in this one uh defensively we look pretty sharp held them to under 40 we got a lot of a lot of uh, shots here 55 to their 42 and it was mainly for turnovers 20 to 20 to 9 i like seeing that we went to the free throw line a lot shot 80 percent johnson you know, he's a plus 29, but, man, where's his points? He's uh, he's averaging 10, but that's only because he had that one game of plus 20. And, you know, his assists are not there. Uh, I don't know what to make of him. Uh, the rest of the team, you know, not a, not a lot of scoring from the starters, but Vining looked good off the bench. He may have – did he hit some three-pointers? He did. He hit two. And then Walker uh, had 13 points off the bench. Want to make sure he's happy with his playing time right now because I feel like he's going to play a pretty big part of the team in the future unless we get a much better power forward um, in recruiting. So now moving on, we got San Francisco next. They're coming in with a good record, so they may not be a pushover. That Belmont game is going to be an interesting one. 
Uh, if you don't know the the region here, the the Nashville region, but where these two play in, um, there's what thirty miles separate those two teams. Uh, I thought I thought I did some the week there. Um, so they're kind of in the same market, but I, you may have um, when I played in a previous playthrough, I did Austin P in the 20 version of this game, and they're in the OVC, which is where Belmont is. And I think from a prestige standpoint, it's just, um, OVC might be just a tab below Conference USA. So man, San Francisco is gonna be tough. They're three and one on the road. I hope we're not set up for a letdown. We're not, so we win 71-60. And Woodley, gosh, Good Lord, that's just, that's just a shocker. Woodley, the backup center who I don't feel too great about, is the may have been the leading scorer. No, he wasn't. Baxter was. But a good good bench play in this one. And then if you look at the team play, uh, we held them to 33%. Rebounds were close, but we won that. And uh, turnovers were fairly close, 13 to 10. But, you know, we haven't been shooting a whole over 50. You know, I remember last year when we were on those good winning streaks, we were shooting consistently over 50%, I guess, sometimes good competition. But Baxter, the senior, he uh, had a good game. He's not going to score a lot of points. He's only rated three at scoring, which is kind of a, you know, it's a mix and match kind of thing because it's, he's a good outside shooter, good rebounder. I would hope that he, you know, he would score some here and there. But if you look at his stats over his career, uh, getting 26 minutes last year, he got eight points, but he's a good all-around player. Um, off the bench, though, Woodley, 19 minutes and 12 points. Dunkley fouled out, and then Johnson had four fouls. He didn't do much better, man. You know, this is the thing with Johnson. It's uh, What a mystery. I mean, he has been, and in the mystery, you know, you guys can weigh in. It could just very well be that I'm playing him in the wrong offense you know maybe he needs to be in the flex or something you know maybe he, he would or high post you know high post might be to his advantage since he's such a good outside shooter maybe that's where he'd be more comfortable but uh, he has been really a mystery I would be willing to bet I think I said it earlier but he might be the best rated player I've had in the in the almost six seasons now with this team but good bench play. Again, Walker had a good game off the bench. Uh, you know, between him and Wilcox, it's, you, I don't know who's the better player right now. So we're going to finish this week out and get the big one coming up pretty soon. Duke on the road. That would be a great one to win. I, You know, don't expect that, obviously, but that would be such a good win if we could pull that one off. We played them, I think Duke is a team that we had played before in this playthrough, but it was several seasons ago, uh, and I think it was in one of the early, um, you know, like early season tournaments, and I can't remember how it went, but I think, you know, back then we were a much worse team, and they probably just beat us easily. Now, we got St. Joseph's, who... We're rated to beat. Um, and then Duke, who have a 37 net. Yeah, they're they're rated to beat us pretty easily. That would be a nice, uh, that would definitely be a nice win. So now we're going up against Belmont. I'm kind of curious about this one. Belmont is year to year, they're, they're one of the better teams than, than the OVC. They were when I was with that Austin P playthrough. Um, in real life, they, they're usually one of the better teams in that conference. Um, even though we're home, I mean, this is not, you know, this is close to being a home game for Belmont. But, hey, we handle them 79-60. That's good. Because, oh, and Steven Johnson, 26 points. He's like Jekyll and Hyde, really. But um, I think this is, if you follow this play, playthrough throughout the whole thing, you know, this is where, if, if you're playing this game yourself, 
this is kind of the next level. You know, when you're getting matchups like this and you're winning pretty easily, um, and these are teams that you would have struggled with and it would have been a complete toss-up, you know, like early in your career here. Like for this team, Middle Tennessee, we won 10 games our first season. We didn't finish above 500 the second season. This would have probably probably been a loss. Um, but when you're going up against teams that you're scouted to beat and you beat them, you know, I think that's where you're kind of at the next level with this game. Um, and, and road wins, when you start racking up the road wins. If I'm looking at the team play here, we, we've had some good defensive performances. That might be where we're winning this year so far. We held a good, usually a good shooting team in Belmont to 34%. Uh, and close in rebounds, but we won that battle. And then we won big in turnovers. Um, Johnson, man, he, 26 points, but no assist. I wonder if all along, I know it's too late to, to do anything about it now, even though he's a good passer, I wonder if he would have just been better to put it shooting guard at this point. Um, maybe Hanson would be a better um, uh, point guard. He's got more assists. He had six in this game. Others others looking good. Wilcox had one of his better games. And then off the bench, Muhammad, who I'm hoping will be ready to start at point guard next year. He, he looked good. Now it's his, yeah, all right. His relationships are pretty good. A lot of bench play here. Uh, Finding Woodley, Walker, these guys are getting a lot of minutes. So that's good. So who do we got next? California Baptist. I know it's it's been kind of a toss up. I mean, there have been a couple, you know, three teams so far. I think you would probably, if you follow basketball, you recognize in Belmont, Wake Forest, of course, and Oregon. But yeah, there's been some, I don't know, some pretty weak competition in here too. I don't. When you when you choose that balanced schedule, which is something I went over um, at the start of the last season, I can't remember the episode number. It can be a mixed bag. You never know what you're going to get. But typically, you're going to get two or three ranked opponents throughout the first 11 games. These guys are 4-2 and two on the road. Okay, we'll win easy, but 83-69, um, but I'm not I, – I, this is a team I'm not familiar with. I'm not sure what conference they're in, but at least we got the win there. Um we had a 50% shooting performance here, really out-rebounded them, 35-22. And then turnovers were low for both teams, but we only had eight. That's great for us. Dunkley, player of the game, that may have been just, well, just his second time getting that. So his his coach relationship is still down there. I don't know what that's about. Uh, but Johnson, strong game here, 13 points, four assists. Hanson, 15 um Points for assists. This guy uh, was a transfer from Arkansas. Um, he he came on and looked good his first season with us, but you know, he's been kind of so-so. I'm hoping he bounces back and has a good year. Baxter solid, eight points, eight rebounds, and then again, these guys except for Muhammad uh, getting a lot of minutes off the bench. So now this is the big one coming up, and, and Duke is uh, what's well, going to be next week, looks like. Duke is currently ranked 20th. This would be, though, the kind of win that last year what, what got us to the tournament as an invite and got us an eight seed if you're, um, if you're just picking up uh, this playthrough and you didn't get a chance to see the last season. We were, we made it to the tournament as an invite and we were an eight seed and we won our first round game against Maryland. Um, what got us there was the, really that non-conference schedule. You know, we went eight and three, we beat Purdue on the road. We beat um, Miami on the road. We, we look pretty good. And, and right now we're up to 28 net um, Southern Miss, they're at ten. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at the polls and media just to see. So we 
we have never, to as far as I can remember, an Oregon ranked first, by the way. Um, so that's how tough they would have been to beat. I've never seen a team from this conference ranked, so that's that's crazy. But I tell you, that's I, that's about the highest, if not the highest, I've ever seen a team in this conference ranked when it comes to net or RPI. I've never seen anybody ranked that high. Um, so let's um, let's just gear up for it. I I know it's probably going to be it's probably going to be a tough one. I, Duke is twentieth in net. We're twenty eighth. I'm curious further here, just to, before we get there, set up this game a little bit. I wonder what kind of opponents they've beaten or played this year. So they beat Memphis and Gonzaga and Marquette. Uh, so that's the kind of schedule we would, you know, we're not ready for that schedule yet, obviously. But, um, man, that's that's what we're up against. This is probably going to be another Oregon, um, you know, laugh fest. They're probably just going to route us. <clears throat> Man. Duke has been up and down, I think, in this playthrough. Um, yeah, 97-64. Um, but they are they're having a good start here. Winning against that kind of competition, that's, that's a strong team. So we look at the team play. We shot poorly, 36%. We were out-rebounded. Hey, we won in turnovers. Individually, Dunkley, 10 points. Um, once again, you know, the bench got some playing time here. Woodley, 11 points, led the team. Uh, Vining got nine. He's another guy. He's just a junior. He may be first in line at shooting guard for next year, unless uh, I don't see him transferring out as a junior yeah so he's happy um we were just really handled in this game benson for them 26 points a five-star player yeah look at that look at the green there um so he's a good all-around player just uh not the kind of player we're ever going to get i can't remember if john benson let's see if it gives his and he's from New Jersey, so we wouldn't have even uh, come across him in recruiting. So now we got another road game coming up here against the St. Joseph team that's having a, a tough start. But once again, a road win is always tough to get here. We're six and two. I would really like to equal what we did last year at eight and three. I don't think we're going to get the net from it that we got last year. We went into our conference schedule last year with an 8-3 record and a net of 30. So I don't expect us to get to be that high if we uh, manage to win two of the next three. But we just got to keep winning, really, at this point. We're 1-2 and two on the road. Not good. We do manage to win here 79-70, but it's close. Again, like, like I said, against a pretty weak team. Uh, check the box score out here. Once again, defensively, I think we, we did well. Most of our points are in the paint. Held them to under 40% shooting. Uh, we out-rebounded them, beat them in the turnovers, but turnovers are kind of high for both teams. We shot 46%, 78 at the free throw line. Dunkley, once again, was player of the game, so that gives him three for his career, too, this year. 12.7 rebounds. I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping um, he is going to develop into a good center. He only got 16 minutes. He, he was in foul trouble. So that's a good line, considering. And then Wilcox had another good game. I'm waiting. I don't know if he's ever had a double-double. He hasn't. Uh, I'm waiting for him to get that because he's getting quite a bit of rebounds. What's he up to now? 4.9. So I think that's going to happen sooner or later. And then off the bench, Walker, 14 minutes. Um, as a sophomore, you know, he, 
I don't know. Um, Wilcox may hold on to that job next year as well. And then Johnson, I think, had a good game here, 11 points, 5 assists. So a good win on the road. One of those that, you know, we considering their record, we just we're going to have to win that one. So we got two more games to go, and I think to salvage anything, we got to beat that Mississippi, Mississippi team. I mean, I, I shouldn't overlook George Mason, but I think net-wise, um, the road win against Mississippi would be worth more. They're in the SEC. I think they have had some runs in this playthrough recently where they've, um, I know, made the tournament and finished pretty high in the seeds and the rankings. So they are. They have a net of 50 right now. They're 7-1. and one. So they would be, well, we're favored to beat them, but I don't think that matters. I think... Uh, I think this will be a, a tough tough one for us to win. I'm going to check recruiting just one last time, make sure if everything's still the way it was in rankings and things. Uh, here's London now playing, I guess, his senior season. His points are going down. Um, Seals, on the other hand, he just keeps getting better. But they – recruiting, man, it's, it's, it's the – toughest thing about this game so let's uh, move ahead here to George Mason this is one we gotta win five and four uh, team but we're playing playing them at home I can't they might be in the same um, conferences St. Joseph's I don't know seems like they might be but I can't uh, can't recall offhand. Now they're one and two on the road. We're five and zero, oh, but this this could be a stunner. No, ninety four sixty eight, big win. And we got Baxter here with nineteen points. Stephen Johnson again, double double digits. So I'll look at him. Look at his game logs here when we uh, take a look at the box score. But they shot pretty well. Uh, they out rebounded us, and turnovers were. Gosh, that was big for us four just four turnovers they had 17 uh, we have way more attempts 62 and I think that's the correlation I've noticed playing this game out um, you know everything else being equal in this case we got 30 you know, they had 30 rebounds we had 29 uh, when when the shooting percentages are pretty close as they are here uh, turnovers will, will mean a lot in terms of how many attempts the team's getting. Plus, for us, we were good at, at three-pointers, too, 11 for 27. Player of the game was Baxter. Um, he's the kind of player I know I'm probably going to miss next year, but um, didn't no, no rebounds, which is unlike him. Dunkley, again, was double digits in points, so he's hovering around 10. You know, maybe that's where he'll wind up. Johnson... Um, Hanson is the one getting the assist on the team. But uh, Johnson has scored double digits now for the last five games. He had that 26 against Belmont, big win, and he's up to 11 and a half. I'd like, if he stayed that way sc scoring and picked up a couple assists per game, I'd be happy. And then off the bench, Walker got a lot of points, uh, or a lot of minutes, sorry, and... Um, a lot of pluses here on the bench. So our bench outperformed them when they were on the floor. That's good. All in all, good win. Muhammad, you know, he's getting, based on minutes, he's getting more assists than uh, um, Johnson. But let me double check that. Is his, yeah, his relationships are okay. That's good. So now fin final game and really the toughest opponent we got left the Wake Forest one uh, is probably not going to be as big as I was hoping it would be in terms of the the away win if we were able to beat Mississippi I think that would be our best win of this non-conference uh, stretch not to mention if it gets to nine wins which is above where we were last year and above what my goal was
Gonzaga, nine and five, um, but still ranked pretty high. And Mississippi, they keep winning. I don't know who they're playing, but they they're good enough to win. You know, whoever they're playing, they're they're beating them. And this that'll be the uh, last game we play in the episode. Then I'll look at some standings and then end out the episode. But um, let's see. We probably got a couple of scouting reports here from the first two teams we're going to face: Marshall and. Uh, this is, you know, this is where we're at as a team. Whether we win this game or not, I mean, we, we lost on the road to a 1-10 Louisiana Tech team to start last season. So you can still lose, but three, four, five seasons ago, you would, we would never have this kind of uh, scouting report in our favor. I mean, you know, we might be 51-49 here and there, but... You know, here's two teams that were in the 60s to them. So we definitely built the program up, I think. Um, we're not to that national recognition level that I'd like to get to, but uh, just in terms of what we've done with this program, I think we definitely have improved it, or I definitely improved it, however you want to say. So this uh, this could mean a lot. Uh, I'm not I'm not overconfident. They're nine and zero at home. Um, you know, this would be icing on the cake, as they say. If if we could somehow win, can't do it. So they won seventy one sixty two. Johnson with twenty points, um, but I think you know, to me, even though that record's the same, we're not the team that we were last year. I don't think. Um, and I'll take a look at this game here and see where we lost it. I mean, shooting, you know, they out-rebounded us. Uh, turnovers were even. A very close game. It really was a close game. They just got a few more uh, attempts than we did and, you know, won the battle in the paint, and uh, we just couldn't couldn't overcome it. Individually, Dunkley double digits in points again. Uh, but Johnson, 20 points. You know, he's, he's putting up the points here and there, but uh, Walker, pretty good game off the bench, but no player in the positive. Johnson was at zero, so we were just outplayed. It was um, – we did win the second half barely, but, you know, this was a, a tough win or a tough, um, a tough loss, but – I don't I just don't think we were matched up well enough to beat him. So I'm going to look at uh, I'm going to finish this week and look at the net just to see. I mean, an 8 and 3 record with the schedule we had, I mean, it might be worth something. Uh but we didn't really have a whole lot of good net wins in this one. Uh not like last year. So I think that really means we're going to have to dominate the conference. And I don't know how that's going to play out. If you got a team like Southern Miss in um, top 10 in net, I'll, I'll, I'll double-check that and make sure that's still where it's at. I, I don't think it's probably going to be there um, now. But, man, what a, what a start for their season. And we play them close. We're playing them soon. Uh, third game in, in the – in the schedule of the conference, but we're playing playing them at home, luckily. And this is going to be, uh, should be the scouting report for that game here in the inbox. So we'll see. So we got Old Dominion, who has a net of 12. Hmm. Now our scout, our assistant thinks we're going to beat them. But they have uh, a good net there. And then, you know, it's close on Southern Miss, but, hey, you know, they haven't played any ranked opponents. We played at least, you know, you could say we played two ranked opponents, two very good, you know, the Oregon Ducks were fifth, and, you know, um, 
so we can't feel too bad about it. How, our net is 23. So we're going in with a better net ranking than we did last year. Now, could that be because um, now we're still a two-star conference, so we're not, you know, we're not picking up that many much prestige. Uh, looking at the rankings here, I know we not, I know we're not going to have any teams that are, you know, showing up. And then we got Oregon second, and Duke is eleventh. Is Mississippi on there? No. Um, so how, how are we 23rd? That's crazy. If I'm looking at the net, I mean, it, it's early in the season. Uh, I get that. But, I mean, do the losses count? I don't know. So we've apparently we've got one quadrant two win. Uh you know, we didn't lose here. Maybe that's maybe that's what's doing it for us. But we'll see. I mean, we did have a couple of uh, away wins. Wake Forest, uh, let's see how they're doing. Maybe they turned it around after they played us. No, they didn't. They're 1-10. in 10. So that one's not, not worth much. Um... I mean, I'll take the ranking, but that does seem a little off to me that we've got. If, if I'm looking at the rank, let me just look at it from here. So we've got St. John's is up there. Are they ranked? Yeah, they're ranked. So we've got Old Dominion at 12, Southern Miss at 19. And Middle Tennessee at 23. So we've got three Conference USC, USA teams in that top 25. Um, that scared me a little bit because, like I was saying, I, I, even though our net's high, I still think we're going to have to have a good season in conference to make a, another run at the tournament, the uh, NCAA tournament. So we may have some good teams here this year uh, in competition. But... That's what we'll find out next episode when we start playing playing out the season in the conference. Um, as always, I appreciate you guys supporting the channel, watching the videos. I've, I've got the Out of the Park Baseball series going up now. I'll probably have another video for that soon. Well, actually, what am I saying? I'm recording these ahead of time. So I, I'll probably have several episodes of the Out of the Park series up by the time you see this one. So if you like baseball, if you, if you like sports management games, give that one a look. Uh, it's another fun game to play. But uh, otherwise, I will see you in the next episode.